take sketching techniques. Today's lesson is going to be on making bands. Um, very often we have to put bands of color or stripes or circles or other geometric shapes onto our cakes and fill them with a color. And it is fairly simple. Um, all you need to do is open up your cake template in Photoshop and we're going to use something called um, a lasso tool. Now if you hold down the lasso tool, you will see that there is this lasso tool. Looks like an actual lasso. And when you draw with it, you can make whatever shape you want. And to deselect, you, you uh, press Command D or Control D or PC. And this is good for making shapes that are more, um, you know, hand drawn. Uh, something I might mention is always create your new shapes on a new layer. So press the new layer button right here next to the trash can and create a new layer on top of all of your other layers so that you're not accidentally drawing on top of your actual cakes. So if you don't like something or you want to move it around, you can fix it. And if you can't fix it, then we are sad and that sucks. The other thing is the polygonal, pol pol polygonal, I don't know how to pronounce it, this tool right here, <laughs> this is more for using, um, for make for making um, shapes that, that are not organic, they're straight lines. So if we have the square cake here, and I want to put some ribbons down at the bottom, I am going to, I, I'm on my, my layer that I want to be on, and I'm going to simply click on the corner here to start my lasso tool. And then I'm going to draw, a, uh, I'm not holding down anything, this just stays straight. And then I'm going to come to my next corner and click, and click, and I actually want these uh, ribbons to be fairly tall. So I'm going to click about here. Now, you might have trouble keeping your lines straight up and down, and a trick is if you hold down shift, it will, your uh, line will go in increments of 90 and 45 degrees. So you can try and you can have a little bit more uh, control over your lines there. So I'm going to hold down my shift so that's straight up and down. Click there. Kind of line it up with my bottom here. There. There. And once you see that little circle appear, when you get close to the end, that means that you have reached the beginning point of your shape and you can now close it. So now it is a solid shape. And to choose a color, you click on your top color right here in your colors area. And I want this to be sort of a, an orangey color. Um, it's the color my bride wants. And a trick to, to creating things in color is always choose, like if you want something to be orange, don't pick this bright orange. That is like 100% saturation, full-blown neon, and is very harsh on the eyes. So always come down in saturation, which is more towards the black, and then go a little bit lighter. So come down and a little bit lighter. Um, it looks a little dingy now, but in real life, things are not at 100% saturation. So if you are drawing in 100% saturation, it's going to look a little funky. So we've chosen our top color. Now to fill this selection, I can press, I can click on the, um, the paint bucket tool here and I can fill that in there like that, undo, or I can go up to uh, edit and then fill. Yes, I want to use the foreground color. I don't want any particular blending mode. Yes, I want it to be 100%. So that's just a couple of different ways that you can do that. So now before I um, you know, start moving on to my my other, my other things here. I'm sorry, I'm switching tools. While this is still selected, I'm gonna come into my brush tool here and uh, make sure that I'm using the correct brush. Let's try, oh, Chucky, where are you? Chuck, I like this brush a lot. So I wanna, I'm gonna go ahead and add my texture and my highlights while this is still selected because it helps 
keep my color within those lines. So I'm going to go to my color again, and I'm going to pick a color that is slightly more saturated and a little bit lighter to do all of my highlights. Maybe like right there. And I'm just going to brush in a few highlights there. And maybe highlight my corner a little bit. Like a so. And this does not have to be perfect. It's for sketchy purposes. And then I'm going to go a little bit darker again and put in some shadows. And this just helps give it the sketchy look. Now when I deselect, I've got these nice clean lines. Nothing went out of, uh, nothing went out of bounds. And then I'm going to go back down to a grayish color and go to my pencils. And now I'm going to just sort of add my sketchy lines that I like to add. That just gives it that drawn quality. And if you don't want to do that, that's totally fine. That's up to you. This is just what I prefer to do. See, as you can see, I'm not really paying attention to, um, you know, precision. The idea is for it to be sketchy. A little bit messy. And I think I'm actually going to uh, make this even a little bit brighter here. So you might think, okay, well, how do I get this color again? You know, I, I want this little orange color here. You can press I for eyedropper and it will choose that color right there. Or you can open up your color palette and it automatically brings up the eyedropper and will choose whatever color you click on. So I want it to be kind of in this range, but I want to go a little bit brighter. Go back to my shock tool. I just want that to be really, really bright right there. Now that I have this kind of finished, so everything's on this one layer, so it makes it really easy to undo this if I don't like it. I can go up to image, adjustments, and I can adjust things like levels, curves, brightness, hue and saturation. Like let's say I wanted this to maybe be a little bit more saturated, I can bump up the orange. Or if I want it to be a little bit more on the red side or the blue side, you can just adjust the hue. But I like the hue, I just want it to be a little bit more saturated. Press OK. And that is it. That is how you can create, um, you know, bands around the, the, the bottom. And of course, you can make them thinner or smaller. And the other thing you can do using this technique is you can also add stripes. So let's say I have a selected area just like that, and I want to do another selected area right next to it. Come up to this top left-hand corner here, and there's uh, a couple little options here. This one is add to selected area. This one is subtract from selected area. And this is basically get rid of everything except for the place where it overlaps. So if I wanted to add like a bump right here, it, see it adds to that area. And if I wanted to take a little circle out of that, it takes away from the area. So you can see how you can see how that kind of works. But for now, we're just going to add to the area just by doing this. And I'm going to do this very quickly, just for the sake of showing you. You could do this with any shape. And then the other thing is, I don't want to work on the same layer that I was on. So before I fill any colors or anything like that in, I'm going to create a new layer. And I am just drawing right in those selections. And uh, deselect, and you can see now I have some stripes, and that was fairly easy. So uh, that's how you might use that. Now let's say I want to use my uh, 
my lasso tool where you just kind of are free drawing, create a new layer. And I might want to uh, make a big bow here, let's say. I'm just going to draw a general shape, a giant bow. And um, I want it to have some little bows hanging off of it as well. Make sure I've got all of that area in there. And I want this bow to be pink, let's say. So I'm going to go ahead and fill it. All right. And while still selected, I'm going to give, give it some shading to sort of define different areas. I'm just doing this very fast. Your clients don't need to see perfectly sharp edges, you know. Don't, don't be afraid to uh, be a little bit messy. What they want to see is the right colors and an idea conveyed. So when you say when they say I want a pink bow, they want to know that you mean when you say pink, it's the same pink that they're thinking of. So this is just much easier to color in when you don't have to worry about going outside of the lines. Deselect. And I'm going to go to my gray tool, or my gray color, I should say. Into my pencils and put in a few sketchy lines. Just to sort of continue defining. You see how fast this is? It's just don't get hung up on being perfect. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how to make a uh, ribbon now around a round tier. Uh, this process is a little bit different, but still really easy. So you start out with your round templates that you have here and uh, go ahead and go to your elliptical marquee tool. It's just, you get that by clicking down and holding, holding down and this little fly out menu will come out. You click that, make sure you have, uh, you've got these little boxes up here. Make sure you have the one that is uh, just the add to selection or the first option, which is just new selection. And we're basically going to create a circle that matches the curve of the bottom layer. Now I've made my, my circle here and it doesn't quite match up. I want to move it over a little bit. While I've still got my finger pressed down and I've moved this selection around, I'm going to hold down the space bar and that will allow me to move this whole thing around so that I can kind of fudge it into the, into the place that I want it exactly so that the curve matches pretty much exactly. It doesn't have to match exactly, but you know, close. Actually, I think it would be better if I do it like this. Okay, that looks like about good. So I've got kind of my my curve there. I'm going to go ahead and let go. I'm also going to make sure that I am on a new layer. So I'm creating my ribbon on its own layer. Still got my my uh, elliptical marquee tool selected and I'm going to change my selection thing to subtract from selection here. And that is going to subtract from this space. So I'm going to try and gauge about where I was width wise and come down and the idea is I am now making the top of my ribbon, right, with this, with this new line. So I'm going to try and match top and bottom. And I'm using my, my uh, space bar to move it around to about how thick I want it to be. And let go. So now we've got sort of a ribbon. We just have these rounded spaces right on the side now that we have to get rid of. And to get rid of those, you just cl click the rectangle marquee tool. Make sure that you have the subtract selection. And I'm just going to flatten out those sides right there, just like that. And now I have a space for my ribbon. So you can now go in and pick a color. And you can fill it into the, uh, the um, select, selected area. And then go to your brushes. 
and add in whatever whatever shading you want. And that's it. Deselect. Grays. You can sketch up the edges and soften those up a little bit. And that's how you make a curved ribbon. Okay, so those are three different ways that you can add shapes uh, to your cake. I hope you found this information useful. And as always, you can find links to the Digital Cake Sketching Group down in the description. You can also find the place where I download these amazing brushes from the KNLK show. It was so awesome and lets us use his crazy cool brushes. And you also find, will find a link on where to buy the tablet that I use with Photoshop that allows me to draw with a pen and not a mouse because drawing with mouse is hard. So um, go ahead and leave any questions or comments in the uh, question and comment area below the video. I'll get back to you as soon as I can, and we will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching.